Hey mamas, it's Mama Fox. It's 10 a.m. Central on Wednesday, October 30th, and we're going to talk about how you can determine the best diet for whatever ails you, okay? Whatever you've got going on, we're going to talk about the best diet for it. And this is something that some of y'all may have spent some time kind of digging into. I have certainly spent a lot of time digging into it, um, even before even before this summer, if you know what I mean, because um, over the past several years, several, as many of you know, um, I have really honed in on um, anti-inflammatory with a side of gut health and definitely a big dose of hormone health, okay? And I, I've had workshops on all three of those focuses. Um, I've had anti-inflammatory workshop several times, gut health workshop, hormone health workshop, sleep and stress management workshop, uh, just to name a few. And um, then about, I guess, a year ago, I really um, started focusing on those three topics, just to pick three, for example, uh, in my then eight-week group, okay? And so, Here's what I want to share with you. Y'all already know, y'all know what I'm going to say. You already know what I'm going to say, but I want to talk to you about why I'm going to say it. <laughs> the best diet, the best diet is an anti-inflammatory diet. Now, before you leave me, I still have things to say, so don't leave me just yet. The, the reason I say that is, is a couple of things. One, we, we know that inflammation is the root cause and effect of chronic disease so let's start there okay we know it is now the other thing though as I um, as I have developed those workshops over the last few years and the courses that went with them and as I was working on updating my eight-week group um, a year ago one of the things I love to well actually I don't love to do I want to do it it's just not my thing one of the things I want to do in my coaching groups, in my courses, is to give, um, you know, sample menus or sample meal lists or whatever. So you kind of have an idea, okay, I need to eat these things for that, right? And because that's really what we want to know. What am I supposed to eat? If I have, you know, um, if I have dry skin patches of some sort, and there's different things about that. If I have dry skin patches, if my gut is out of whack, if my uh, hormones are out of balance or out of whack, if my cholesterol is not where I want it to be, if I'm gaining weight and don't know why, if I'm wanting to lose weight, if my anxiety is bubbling up out the roof, if I'm having, you know, just kind of dull headaches all the time, whatever ails you, whatever ails you, the bottom line is we want to know well, what can I do about it. And, and especially what can I eat or, or what should I eat, what shouldn't I eat, because we've got to eat. And so obviously, uh, if we got to eat and we want to eat, then let's um, use that to our advantage when we have these different things that are bothering us, whatever they are. Or maybe you have multiple of those, and there's a lot more I could have named. Uh, certainly joint pain, uh, fatigue, anything like that. So... As I, um, I don't remember, I lose track of time, but maybe four years ago I developed the anti-inflammatory workshop. I can't remember anymore. I'm so sorry. Four or five years ago I had the anti-inflammatory one, the gut health, the hormone health, and the sleep and stress management. I wanted to give these uh, resources to the mamas taking those workshops, taking those courses, things like that. Certainly in my eight-week group. Now in the 10-week group, you know, I've always wanted to give those menus and recipe resources. Now, here's the funny thing. Um, you know, I don't want to just, or I didn't want to just give it, give the same one every time. Okay, here's your sample menu. Hey, didn't she give us that in the anti-inflammatory workshop? This is the gut health workshop. Why didn't we get a different one? Wait. This is the hormone health workshop. Why are we getting the same menu from the anti-inflammatory or from the gut health? I didn't want to do that, okay? Because I figured there'd be grumbling and I wanted to be able to give more uh, resources anyway. But I want to tell you something. It was actually quite difficult. <laughs> it was actually cumbersome and difficult 
to build and create different menus and different recipe resources for those different topics, for those different workshops, it was actually difficult because <laughs> the food is almost all the same. That's what I want to tell you. The, the, if you are grappling with any of those things or you're wanting to improve your gut health or improve your hormone health or whatever it is, anti-inflammatory. The end, period. Okay? The end. It is anti-inflammatory. And so you hear me say 80-20 all the time. Truly, 80, maybe 90 percent of the food for, for whatever ails you that's actually going to help you um, for, for the long haul, it's anti-inflammatory. Start there. You don't have to keep spinning your wheels trying to figure out, well, what should I eat for this? What should I eat for that? What should I eat for that? When I would go and look into and dig deeper into, you know, different things, uh, either because I was creating a workshop or I had maybe mamas in my membership group or maybe mamas asking about different things, I go and I look and you'll find, okay, you know, here, here is a free five day menu plan for, um, fill in the blank. I don't know, gut imbalance, or here's a five day menu plan for, you know, low estrogen. The foods, it, assuming they're built, assuming the meals and menus are built, uh, correctly, um, and are truly going to help you, it's going to be anti-inflammatory. It just is. Now they'll put a different label on it, you know, to, to get your attention. And, and because, you know, they know you may be searching for this, this ailment or this problem or whatever, but it's anti-inflammatory. Okay. 80%. Now, could there be some nuance? Sure. Sure. And I saw that a little bit, especially with like gut health. Obviously a gut health focus is really going to lean hard into, um, probiotic food for sure, but that's also anti-inflammatory. <laughs> And so it's all, that's going to be promoted as well. But yes, it's going to have a little bit of a focus on that for sure. And then, um, as I was learning, as I was doing my menopause certification and digging into and creating my hormone workshop, sure, there are some foods that are kind of like superstars that you might want to incorporate in, but those foods are also on the anti-inflammatory list as well, almost mostly, okay? And so I know it can get overwhelming when you're trying to maybe work on something and you're trying to figure out what to eat, what not to eat. But honestly, um, and I have been, I've been there, I've been in that overwhelmed state before too. And this is comforting to know if you start with a truly anti-inflammatory approach, start there and that will help things get making progress in the right direction, help you to feel better, think better, sleep better, all the things start there. And then that 20, you're still going to keep that part. The anti-inflammatory is the foundation. And then that 20, uh, that can be, well, I need, I want to make sure I'm really working on gut healing. So I'm going to make sure I get in my daily kefir and this and that. And that is what I did. Uh, when I was working on really turning my gut health around, um, I did not miss a day of kefir. I mean, very, very rarely did I miss a day of kefir. I wished I had known back then to incorporate some fermented foods, but honestly, back then, 10 years ago, I don't know if my taste buds would have put up with that, to be honest. But taste buds change, okay? Um, but now... I still want to take good care of my gut, of course. It's still super important. If I don't have my kefir, um, if, I go, if I were to go a couple of weeks without it, I can tell my anxiety goes way up, especially in the car. I've shared that with y'all. And so I'm in a maintenance mode for that. It doesn't mean I don't have it, but I am in a maintenance mode for that. So I don't have to focus on that quite as much. Um, but I did back then, for sure. Okay. So that's the main thing I want to point out to you is that anti-inflammatory is the foundation. You cannot go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong with that. And then you can tweak and tailor as you have different things you want to address and you want to work on. 
And again, I saw that as I was reading and researching and digging and trying to create meals and resources and menus and things for those different workshops. And it was so hard to come up with different ones because it was all anti-inflammatory. And of course, that was where I started. That was the first workshop I had ever done. Now, what I want to tell you, just very simply, um, I've got five steps for you. If you're not sure what to do, what to eat, how to go about it, you're hearing all kind of stuff from all different kinds of people and things like that. Major on the majors. Don't don't major on the minors. Don't get bogged down in the little details that really don't move the needle that much. They really don't. Okay? Major on the majors. Number one, I'm going to give you five steps. So write these down. Okay? It's probably going to, some of y'all done heard this. And if you're in the Foxy Foundation group, I know you done heard it. Okay? Number one, food choices. Anti-inflammatory food choices. Just dial that in. And, and I've shared so much here um, in the guides on YouTube. You can Google it if you want. Anti-inflammatory food ch choices, number one. 80-20 at least on that, okay? I'm not trying to get you to be perfect. I am not perfect. Nobody is. Food choices, number two. Then once you've got a handle on what foods to be eating and not eating for an anti-inflammatory approach, Number two, build those meals well. Build them well. They need to be nourishing. They need to be supportive. And that we talked about. We've talked about that a lot here in video and in post here about how to build a beautiful, nourishing meal. Because we don't snack because we're not, we're not a growing kid and we're not growing a kid. If you're growing a baby, that's different. And if you're a 13-year-old boy, it's different, but probably not. Most of us are not doing either one of those things. We want to get our meals built well. The food peace course that many of you have already taken, is it's just $27, y'all. Uh, that will explain more of it in a little bit more detail for sure. So food choices, anti-inflammatory, build those meals well. Okay, and then three, naturally, when you build those meals well to for that those food piece meals, those nourishing meals, you are naturally going to fall into eating three meals a day. You're not going to need snacks if you build the meals well. Now, we're all different sizes and heights and activity levels and ages and seasons of life and et cetera, et cetera. So when I talk about building your meal, and I may say minimum 30 grams of protein. D don't just skip to the 30 grams of protein. Hear the word minimum. You might need more. Very possibly so. Or at least some of your meals might me need more. And if any meal is going to be bigger, let it be breakfast for goodness sakes. Because that will set you up so well. Um, I haven't focused hugely on talking to you about fiber and fiber goals. I, I don't love to count. The protein is really the only thing I'm paying much attention to, but I am trying to be mindful. Now, I will tell you, a, a, a good fiber goal for women who are over 40 and beyond is anywhere from 30 to 50 grams of fiber per day divided, okay? 30 to 50 grams of fiber per day divided over your three meals, okay? Um, and that's just a basic goal, to kind of consider and, and that fiber is going to, it's going to go so much better for your food piece, for your waistline, for all the things we're trying to do. If that fiber is coming from whole foods, not extracted fiber. Okay. Try to aim for whole foods because it's just going to be more nourishing, more filling. Your body can use it in the ways it needs to be using it and not lead to, you know, constipation, to be honest. So naturally, your meals are going to have the veggies, the greens, the protein, healthy fat. Um, if you're going to do any kind of um, carbs that are healthy, you're going to tack them on at the end. Um, and just building those meals, you, you may 
you, I might aim for 10 grams of fiber per meal, but you may need more. You may need 15. I don't know. Um, but I can tell you this, if you're, if you're building that meal well, and you're not afraid to add some good fat, 20 to 30 grams of fat, okay? 30 grams of, of protein minimum. 10 grams of fiber minimum. So think about it this way, 10, 20, 30. 10 grams of fiber, 20 grams of fat, healthy fat, 30 grams of protein. That's the minimum. You can add more. And if that meal isn't keeping you full and satisfied for at least five hours, roughly, then you need to think about why. It could be that you needed more of something in that meal. It could be that you were using you know, shortcuts. And I'm not, I'm not saying I don't ever use a shortcut, but like I've shared in the food piece and I've shared here, having a protein shake at breakfast. Nah, -uh, I don't do that no more. No way. It will not fill me up and keep me satisfied. Uh, not even for four hours, three if I'm lucky. And those days are over. So be mindful and think about it. Just use that as information. If you've built a meal and you thought that it was nourishing and well-built, but you're hungry two or three hours later, then something's up. Something's up. And you need to take a look at that um, meal and see what you need to change for next time. Or it could even be as simple as, well, that meal was good and I liked it, but I'm going to have it at lunch next time. Because, you know, by, by lunchtime, you've got food in your tummy, your blood sugar is more stable and all the things if you've built a really great breakfast. So, as I've shared before, if I have a protein shake, which I still like, I'll have it at lunch, not breakfast. And it does me fine at lunch. doesn't do me well at breakfast, okay? So, just think about that. So, again, anti-inflammatory food choices, building meals well, that should keep you full and happy and satisfied for about five hours. And we need that five hours at least because we want to really be protective of our insulin. It's not just about glucose, although that's obviously very important. It's also about insulin. Having Doing that, you're going to naturally fall into three meals a day and, and you won't need to snack. On occasion, I, want, I, I think I've shared this here before, on occasion... I won't build my um, supper well. Maybe it's because I'm out and I just didn't order enough protein or whatever. Uh, and sure enough, I want to start snacking at night. I'm not actually hungry, but my body knows I didn't give it what it needed. I didn't give it all the things it needed at dinner. And my body's like, okay, we're trying to fill that void that you didn't give us enough of this, that, or the other. You didn't give us enough fiber. You didn't give us enough amino acids and the protein, whatever. So that's why it's so important to really uh, build those meals well. And when it doesn't happen well, when you don't, or maybe you thought you did and it didn't work out, or maybe you kind of knew, well, you know, I think I can fudge here. I had a had a really great breakfast, so I think at dinner I'm just going to fudge. Listen. Just use that as information, okay? Knowledge is power. Uh, don't beat yourself up about it. I've done the same thing, you know, every a few times a month, every month, and it's just good information. And it also shows me, oh, okay, when I build my meals well, the food piece way, it works. <laughs> and when I don't, it don't work. Go figure. That's great information, okay? So that's three. Now four, that's, that's where I would start, I should say. Let me back up. That is where I'd start. What you're eating, how you're building your meals, and having three meals a day. No snacks, okay? But three meals. Start there and do that in like a 12-hour window, okay? Do it in a 12-hour eating window, which means you have a 12-hour overnight fast. So that might mean that supper is over by 7 p.m., or roughly, and then you don't eat again until 7 p.m. the next morning. That is not wacky. Uh, that's not really even fasting, okay? That's not wacky. That's just smart. Start there because as Dr. Bickman has said, Dr. Fung has said, probably some other people have said, if, if you're grappling with insulin resistance um, and or if, especially that, but also if you're not metabolically healthy, 
if you're, you know, struggling in that area, it is very difficult to, to go longer than that. It's really hard and you kind of set yourself up for problems. Okay. So if you're interested, if you're interested in tightening that up, do it slowly. Start with 12 hours overnight. And then number four, over time. Do, if y'all have not watched all my video I did a few weeks ago about all the wrong ways <laughs> to do fasting or time restricted eating, whatever you want to call it, please watch that video after this one's done or watch it soon. Uh, because I see some of y'all making the same mistakes and I think you're thinking, oh, well, that'll never happen to me. Mama, <laughs> I do. I see some of y'all doing some of the same things that I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, danger, danger. Um, and I don't want that for you. I, I, I really don't. And I'm telling you from my menopause certification, from my sleep and stress management certification, from my own life, <laughs> can tell you that if you do decide to use the tool of fasting and you just jump into it haphazardly and you start doing longer fast and you're doing it all the time, you're going to have problems with your cortisol at some point. Could be in a month, could be in three months, could be six months. You're going to have problems um, and you're not going to enjoy it. it. It really, honestly, really shouldn't be that difficult to um, go 14 hours without um, without eating. It, it, it really shouldn't. But if you've tried that, 14, 15, 16 hours, if you've tried that and it was like you felt terrible, um, you were fatigued, you had headaches, um, you really struggled, then that is a pretty good sign. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it's a pretty good sign that you're 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 jumping into it too too fast too soon and your body is not liking it okay it really ought not be that hard it, not that not that it isn't maybe hard but what i would suggest is just number 4 over time as you're eating to nourish your body you're eating an anti-inflammatory healing way you're eating your three meals and you're not just shoving food in your mouth in between then tighten up that 12 hour window to a 10 hour window over time because that shouldn't be too hard either. So going back to the other example, dinner ends around seven ish, 7 p.m. at night. A 10 hour eating window would mean you would fast 14 hours overnight. That would put you eating breakfast around 9 a.m. Not too late, not too late. Um, that is a great way to kind of um, work that fast, I think it's called a fasting muscle, but kind of get used to that idea of tightening up your eating window a bit, if you want to. Again, it's a tool. Not everybody has to use the same tools at the same time. If you want to keep a 12 hour eating window and have your three meals a day and that is working well for you, please do stay right there. That is fantastic. And just know, you know, you don't have to be so regimented about it. Oh my goodness. Please don't, please don't be regimented and looking at the clock constantly. Can I eat yet? Can I eat yet? Can I eat yet? Please don't do that. Okay. Please. We got to learn to eat when we are hungry. When our body is telling us we're truly hungry, that's when we need to eat. Not when the clock tells us that it, we are allowed to eat or we can eat. We've got to get away from that a little bit too. And so in my own experience over the last few months doing, um, I guess doing some fasting on occasion uh, better, and I say that because many days I have three meals in a 10 hour window. But guess what? Sometimes, that's my goal, but sometimes um, it's a 12 hour window because I got hungry earlier. Okay, <laughs> okay, no big deal, no big deal. Um, sometimes when I wake up, depending on what I ate the day before, my activity level the day before and how I slept and all those things, sometimes when I wake up, I'm, I'm just, I'm not hungry and I don't get hungry until maybe 10, but that's not every day. Some days I wake up and I'm ready to eat around 7.30, so I do. 
uh, sometimes I wake up and I'm not wanting to eat yet and maybe I don't eat till 10 and I eat a nice big nourishing meal and then I'm not hungry until like maybe four. So I don't, I don't eat when I'm not hungry anymore. And so I might eat supper at four and done for the day. And that might mean that I get two meals that day. And some days that I get three. And sometimes I might eat a little later in the morning. And sometimes I might um, cut it off a little sooner at night. The point here is learning. We all have got to learn to list, to allow. That's the thing. We've got to allow our body to give us cues. We, many of us have silenced our bodies for so long telling it, oh, no, 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 I have to eat within an hour or two of waking, regardless if I'm hungry. And then I've got to eat every three to four hours after that. We have, we have silenced our body for so long and we've not nourished it well with, with really great, well-built meals that our body, it may take a little while for your body to give you those cues. It's possible, but we need to start listening to those hunger cues and, and knowing, hey, if I'm not hungry, don't eat. It's okay. It's like when you're sick, when you're really sick and um, your body is working on healing and fighting off infection or fighting off disease or whatever it is, and, and you're not hungry, do you force food? I hope not. You might drink some chicken broth. You might sip on some things, but you don't force food when you're sick and your body's telling you not to eat. Um, and same here, we, we need to think about, okay, my body is, my body wants to heal. My body wants to work for me. My body doesn't want to work against me. It's doing all it can to keep me alive and functioning. Um, but we really need to listen to it about when we're hungry. So I'm almost done here. Anti-inflammatory food choices, foundational, building the meals well, nourishing meals, not snacky, not grazing. You're not, you're not a cow. You don't need to graze. You're not growing a kid and you're not a growing kid. We don't need snacks and all that kind of stuff. Um, having those three meals in a 12 hour window minimum, that's where I would start right there. That's the, the first three is where I would start and, and stay there for however long you need to stay there or want to stay there. That's the foundational three. And then over time, as you can tell, uh, just by how your body is, is telling you when it's hungry or not, over time, maybe tighten that 12 hour eating window to a 10 hour eating window and stay there. That's fine. As you do that, you're going to be healing. It, it, you, you are worth the time and effort it takes to heal naturally. And, and this is our biggest lever, what we eat and how we eat it and when we eat it. This is our biggest lever. And then number five, then if, and I do mean if, if you want to use the tool of fasting, for heaven's sake, take it slow and don't do it the same way every day. Uh, be careful and mindful of that. Please, please, please listen to the video I did before when I did it poorly. Also, please consider the different books I share here and the different people I share. They all say that. <laughs> they all say that. Um, you don't need to do it the same way forever. No way. Um, take it slow and know that if you still have a lot of healing, if you're very insulin resistant, you definitely need to take it slow and just stick with the first three things I said and then maybe add the fourth one in over time. Um, for a general book that really helps lay out um, a good foundational um, food choices, okay? For a good foundational book, it, I think I would probably say this one here. There's things I don't like about this book, okay? But that's true of all of them. <laughs> this book, Good Energy, that's relatively newer, that book really lays out well good foundational um 80-20. Uh, you can tweak a little bit, but if you're wondering, okay, what should we eat? What should we not eat? I feel like that book lays it out probably the best of all the books I have read over time. And, and partly it's because it's newer, so she has the advantage of 
knowing about increasing protein and knowing about this, that, or the other. Um, I think that is a, a good, solid book to, but, you know, disclaimer, she's a little woo-woo. I cannot help that. Um, several people, <laughs> several people are kind of woo-woo. Um, so she's a little woo-woo, and that does come out in parts of the book, but not generally the whole book, nothing like that. So that would be my disclaimer on that. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, again, the purpose of our free group here, the purpose of our free group is anti-inflammatory eating. That is the purpose because it is foundational. And, you know, some of y'all are, um, some of y'all still are in childbearing years, having babies. Some of y'all are way past that and you're just like, give me all the grandbabies. Um, so we're in different seasons here. And that is why I don't, I don't choose to focus on just one season primarily, although definitely over 40 and beyond, um, is a, is a general, a general, uh, focus, but that's pretty broad because certainly you can still be having a baby when you're 40 or 40 something. Absolutely. Um, but my focus here at personally and as a coach is anti-inflammatory. It is foundational hands down and foundational. And with that, in my own life and in so many of the ladies I do help, we've seen and learned in recent time, probably the past year, that insulin resistance is a bigger problem than we realized. Didn't realize how big of a problem it was. And those two are tied together. So that is why it's our focus here. Um, not that we can't talk about other things, we can, but eating an anti-inflammatory way, eating in a way that helps to prevent, reverse, lower insulin resistance, that's the primary focus um, of this group. So I hope that's helpful. I think it's foundational for, I don't think, it is foundational for everyone. And so whether you're listening in and you're wanting to help your husband, yeah, totally. <laughs> Same applies to him. Obviously, if you're wanting to help your husband, guess what? His nourishing meals are going to look a little bit bigger, a little bit different than yours, for sure. Uh, but foundationally the same. Definitely. Okay? All right. I hope that was helpful. Um, I want to tell you that this is kind of out there, but in case you're wondering, or, or like if you're new, oh my goodness, you're in for a treat. We're about to flip the calendar to November. I can't even believe it, and I'm so sad because I love October so much. But December 1st, mark this on your calendar. December 1st, we will do our annual Christmas holiday advent calendar free um, free 12-day event. Now, it's, it's going to get a little bit of a makeover, just a little bit. But those of you who have been here for a while, you know it's like super fun. It's a big deal. There will be prizes. And this will start December 1st and go through December 12th. And the way that I will, um, the way the Advent free event works is I will have our, um, not challenges, I hate to call them challenges. I'll have our task, our things to do and share. I'll have it set up so that if you want to invite a mama friend in to give her a taste of our group, kind of a taste of what we're doing, what we're eating, whatever, she will be able to participate. So it's not like, it's not like the 12 days, the, uh, the Advent 12 day event will be tied to the food piece course. Cause many of y'all may not have taken that. You don't, it's not a requirement. Um, and it won't be tied to anything. It will be something that everyone can do. Everybody can do it. I try to make my free challenges that way, and that will be the next one. will be December 1st through the 12th, the Advent um, holiday event. So that'll be, you know, as we get closer, as we get closer, start inviting your mama friends in because many, many of your mama friends will be thinking about, okay, after the holidays, I got to make some changes. After the holidays, come January 2nd, I got to lose weight. Come January 2nd, I got to eat better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I get it. I get it. It's a good time. It's a good time to kind of refocus and things. But hey, how about December 1st? <laughs> how about December 1st? We make some good choices then too. 
Um, how about we go ahead and start making some changes to help ourselves get through the holidays with a little bit of damage control, honestly, especially for those who aren't eating in a healthy manner particularly. So get your mama friends on in here. I will talk and share more about that um, two, probably about two weeks before we start, okay? I will not be going live the week of Thanksgiving because, I mean, y'all won't be here either. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving, with it being so late this year, I won't be going live that week. So I'll definitely explain more about the Advent um, event. Um, and we'll have lots of winners. It's going to be super fun. I know some of y'all have done this before for sure. And um, anyway, I hope that helps. All this discussion about what to eat, 80-20. 80-20. I really subscribe to that. Uh, I, that's what I do in my own life. That's what I teach in the groups that I coach and teach in. 80% um, anti-inflammatory approach, and you're going to make a dent, a, a huge dent in whatever ails you. Start there. Build those meals. Start with that 12-hour window. Maybe shrink it to 10 over time. That's the foundation, Okay. That is the foundation, and again, this is a good resource book um, if you're looking for just an all-around book that will kind of help you um, know what to eat, what not to eat, those kinds of things. There are others, but that's a pretty good foundation one. All right, ladies, thanks for joining me. I will um, see y'all over in our group participating in the post and comments. All right, bye-bye.